with the power of editing, we slow time down again. Want to give Mr. Leland Brown here a break. He's been running around this truck in the last 50 seconds super fast because he's got superpowers that way. He takes vitamins, he takes uh, supplements, he takes the maca. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so I figured I'd give him a breather and then uh, and then he's about to kick in the superpowers, you know, he makes time just fly by. Any words for the for the general public? Do not believe that stuff about the Mac. <laughs> the Mac. <laughs> it's an inside joke. If you know about supplements, you know about the Mac. Yeah, I finally got it all together. Mr. Brown here got his lights hooked up. Got his truck secure. Secured in the fifth wheel. Got his uh, landing gear tires, hydraulic system up in the air. Towed vehicle, got them tires up in the air, as you can tell. Got his light bar going on over here. So, since I did a time lapse and it looked like we just did this in like uh, 15 to 20 seconds, um, on average, how, how long would you say this usually takes when, you know, with no, no hiccups? Hour, between an hour and an hour and a half. Because normally, like you see that blue truck over there, on the back it's got that, that black rubber strip that's going up and down the side right you have to tie those off because when you're pulling the truck backwards the wind will just rip that right out well these trucks they don't have them so that saves you a good you know five to ten minutes not having to tie these off and it helps with your wind resistance because it doesn't have a big old parachute on the roof like that blue one does talking about these strips right here at the very top, all the way at the top. The air gets caught in that and it's, it messes your gas mileage up. Yep. But in these, it's flat top, no fairings here, so it just glides to the wind, so you can get maximum fuel economy out. All right, we heard it from the expert. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So he's driving this one, he's pulling this one, I'm driving that one. And we're going to get on down the road and, uh, and get some money. Yeah. All right. We'll check you guys out next time. Peace. Later. See you later. So I don't know. You guys think of a catchphrase or something for me to say. All right. Huh? Oh, yeah. All right. Later. All right, guys, looks like we finally made it here to our destination. As you can see, we're here in Jackson, Georgia. Just showed up. Getting ready to take this apart and get on out of here and get on home. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah! So, we hope everybody enjoyed this special edition time-lapse video boom trailer setup. It's, uh, it's freaking hot out here, so Mr. Mr. Brown ready to get on the road and get on to the house. Oh, my gosh. Bad. Okay, we beat the clock today, didn't we? Yes, sir. That was the difference between getting home tonight and tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> yeah, we only had 350 miles. We left at around 9 a.m., Central Time. We left around 9, 9 a.m. Central Time and had to get over here before 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Which, if you know that if you go from Central to Eastern, you lose an hour. So, our window to get here to drop off these vehicles was really tight, but we made it within about an hour to half an hour. And uh, so now we're going to be able to go home this evening. Uh, instead of instead of having to wait till tomorrow afternoon, you get a little extra time at the house. Yeah. So uh, again, there's something I want to reaffirm, and I want I want to make sure everybody everybody knows from the expert um, what your feelings on having a tow vehicle is. And I know we've hashed this we've hashed this out on a bunch of episodes. I don't care what people are putting on the web about they do fine without it, you'll do better with it. And in the grand scheme of things, it's a safety issue. If you ride in a single, come winter time, that truck breaks down and it's negative five outside, truck doesn't work, you can't get in the heat, what are you gonna do? You better get out the truck and start doing jumper jacks and running in place to keep that heat going until you get help. But if you got a tow vehicle, you get out, you climb right into your tow vehicle, turn it on, get you some heat, even disconnect, go get a hotel until the next morning or something. You need a tow vehicle. It's an issue of safety. So, in a nutshell, get some wheels, people, because it's just a matter of staying alive sometimes out here with these inclement weather conditions, you know. I mean, a lot of you probably like, yeah, well, I plan for the weather and all that. And that's great and all. But what we don't plan for is a breakdown, unfortunately. Yeah. And they do happen and they like to happen in areas where you don't have any cell phone service. You can't get a hold of anybody. You don't want to do it out in the high desert. You don't want to do it out in... in, in or you deliver, you deliver in a place where there is no transportation. Like out here, we're in Georgia. We're like maybe 45 minutes south of Atlanta. There's no Ubers out here. There's no buses out here. There's mm -hmm. no cabs out here. Very rural. So you always, now you're forced to ask the customer for a ride, and that's not very professional. So. Yeah. Other places, Wyoming, Montana, you know, places like that. Or you get up in like Vermont and certain areas up there, or Maine. There's really nothing up there. And let's do the math. I'm going to say this again. I told a bunch of y'all, so y'all, a lot of y'all familiar with this, this feel from talking to me personally. If you get to your location at 9 o'clock at night and they stay open late, if you got to get a rental, you have to wait till tomorrow morning. So you're going to hold on to that truck. I'm going to drop mine off tonight. By the time you drop off and get a rental, I'm already at the next pickup. So that means at the end of the week, I'm doing at least, if I just do one more trip to you every week, on average 500 bucks for a single, I'm, I'm, I've, I've two grand you. By the end of the week, I've done two grand more than you. Now, if I do that twice in a week, do the math. So you're leaving a lot of money on the table not having the tow bill. A lot of money. I've been years, trust me, the tow bill. All right, you heard it from the man himself, Mr. Token. It's a safety issue. It's for your own well-being. It's it's for your own comfort. It's so you can save money. All around, there just doesn't seem to be anything wrong with having a tow vehicle. A good, reliable tow vehicle will get you out of a pinch. Plus, 
a lot of times you get a little bit of a negotiating leverage because when they know you have a tow vehicle and you don't want to stick around for three days on a repair, they can't really hold you to it. You'll tell them like, hey, I got other stuff I got to do and I'm going to get about to get my vehicle and get out of here. So, you know, just understand that you get a little bit of more negotiating leverage too with whatever company you're with when you have a tow vehicle. See, all, you got all your valuables back here. Those of you to get a pickup truck. I can lock this. Secure. Nobody takes anything from it. That's it. All right. Well, we'll check you guys out on the next one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my girlfriend thinks I left for work like 10 minutes ago. I'm gonna scare the crap out of her in the shower. Ah! Hey, what the fuck? Okay, I know this looks weird, but I can't, I can explain. It's 